For a demonstration on symbols and then one on patterns, I've got a file open from the student folder called Shapes and Symbols. This diagram with a circle and a star has already been converted to a symbol. So we're going to modify this symbol using the Symbols library. So I'm going to bring up the Symbols panel over here. And we know it's a symbol because we see its match right over here. In fact, I'm going to take one more of these and add it to the illustration here. So we've got two of these symbols now. We'll just move this one over. Now, as far as modifying a symbol and actually redefining it, there's a number of ways you can do this. One of the easiest ways is from the symbols panel here, double click the actual symbol. This is going to put the symbol in what we call isolation mode. Now, you might recall from what Lee covered that isolation mode allows you to take individual objects that you have either in a diagram or illustration or, in this case, a symbol, and just make sure you can edit these without risk of editing something else in your documents. So with that in mind, I'm actually going to use the direct selection tool so I can get this star selected in the middle. Then all I'm going to do is change the fill color. So I'll just click the drop down arrow. I'll choose a different color fill. Just as a friendly reminder, we want to make sure that when we leave this, it changes all of the instances of that symbol. All I'm going to do is exit symbol editing mode here, and look at that. The symbol has been changed in the symbols area, and both instances of the symbol have been updated. Remember that the whole reason for your creating symbols is to have something repeatable you can use throughout your documents. One of the things that Lee showed you was how to use a symbol sprayer, which you can use with the selected symbol to spray a symbol multiple times in a diagram. That symbol is a little big for the sprayer, so I'm just going to undo this spray and click on the selection tool. Now one extra thing that we want to cover with patterns is transforming a pattern. Take for example this star. So with this star I'm going to apply a pattern swatch. I'll go over to swatches. There are a couple of pattern swatches here. Here's one. A pompadour. Now before I click on this pompadour swatch, What's the one thing you want to pay attention to before you change anything on a shape? Is it changing the fill or the stroke? Now, looking at the left-hand side here, the stroke is actually selected right now, so I need to activate the fill first. Then we can go back to swatches and click on that pompadour swatch. There we go. So now that has filled up the star. Now, we want to leave the star at an angle, but we want to transform the pattern inside of it. To do this, we'll click the object menu, we'll go to transform, and for this example, I'll click rotate. Notice, though, that by default, transform objects is selected, but this time I'm going to click transform patterns. I'm going to uncheck transform objects. And as I move this around, notice that the star does not move, but the pattern inside of it rotates. And of course, you're only going to see this if you have the preview checkbox selected. So this is actually pretty nice here, that we can take a pattern swatch that we've applied and then rotate it. I've put this at a nice 45 degree angle now, so I'll click OK. 